questions for you, Kim. Hmm. Um, so you recently did like the goal, your goal setting reflection time for the business and like made a plan for the next few months, which we've talked a little bit about on a previous episode. Um, but since then, you've kind of, you did like a little check in with us yesterday and you were like reflecting on something that you think has had a big impact on the goals that you set, which was, mm -hmm. well, there was lots of things that went into it, but one of the things I wanted to ask about was, um, so like each morning you spend time visualizing, manifesting and doing like your gratitude thing, mm. which I know you've done like since I met you basically. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to find out like what your process is for that, because like, I know we we're all really excited yesterday talking about like how that can influence things. Mm. And like you said, you like use it as like a check-in thing throughout the day. Mm. Um, but like, what do you actually do with that time? Yeah. So I think there's so many like audio books and stuff out there that are like, start your morning, right. And like that shit works. You just got to figure out what yours is. So mine is like, I wake up at the same time every day and I have an hour that is just purely dedicated to me. No stimulus from phones. I don't pick anything up like that. And I've got four things to achieve and it starts with meditation. And then I go into gratitude. I visualize and I set my intent. So my meditation is I just do like 10 minutes and I'm basically just trying to get to a place of peacefulness. Um, and for me, like I listened to one, uh, it's by a guy called Joe Dispenza. And he basically is just getting you to what it happens for me is like in that he's getting you to, um, if you've ever seen those, like the pictures of the universe where it's like all the galaxy and the stars and stuff, I'm basically trying to put myself in that where nothing around me exists except for me in space or in the galaxy or in the universe and then that we all become a swirl so I can swirl all those stars and energy through my body to a point that everything is just energy molecules so I kind of get to that place um and like that that's just a guided meditation at the moment i'm trying to experiment with getting to that state without the guided meditation because i've been doing it for a couple of months now so when i am committed to doing a meditation properly and i haven't woke up tired that's what it looks like otherwise i'm just kind of like dozing back to sleep uh which is nice <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah that's the first kind of 15 minutes and then afterwards i just spend a little bit of moments going okay what am i grateful for and like, I literally like, I'm just like, so grateful, like whatever comes up for me, I, I feel it. So it's not just like, I'm grateful for like the people I work with. I think about, I'm grateful for the people of, that I work with. And I literally visualize your faces or like a moment where we've like laughed or had an interaction or, and I've looked at you and been proud of you. And I try to recreate that feeling in my body. And I'm like, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. And like, it makes me feel good. It puts my vibration, my energy up a little bit higher. And I, I, know, I don't move on until I've tried to feel it. Now, when I start doing this, sometimes I fall out of these patterns and I don't do it. Um, and then I have to like build gratitude again. And when I'm starting gratitude, I'm just like, I'm grateful for blah. I'm grateful for this. And then, and then it's nothing. I'm just forcing myself to do it. So what I try to do is feel it because that's where the biggest impact I find comes from. So initially, if you're not there, just force yourself over a week or two or three weeks, you will start to feel the gratitude for the things that you are grateful for. And normally I'll have like two or three or four things that I literally will just go, I'm grateful for um, the bed that I'm lying in and how comfy the coat, like the covers are. And I like, we'll just be like, and that's literally it. I can feel it like that thing. So gratitude's done. That kind of lifts my vibration, as I said, to another level. Um, and then I start to visualize a couple of goals that I'm working on um, for my life. So generally they fall into the category of like wealth, health and happiness. And so what I have a little... I guess you would call it like a mantra maybe that I say, and I just say abundance. No, there is an abundance of X available to me and it will come in the form of blah is kind of what I 
I think. And I love the, the minute I say there is an abundance of this, a feeling of openness. Is this the level of detail you wanted, Vic? Or did you want yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, the minute I say abundance, like it feels open, it feels available. It feels like the opportunity is there and no fear is there about that's not fucking mm-hmm. possible. That's impossible, Kim. Like that doesn't come up. So when I say there is an abundance of X available to me, and because I'm in that state of visual, like, sorry, I'm in the, the gratitude carries on. I can feel it. The next activity, I start to feel the abundance. And it's almost like I get to a point of the feeling of those things that I'm trying to attract to me or like taking action on to manifest into my life start. It feels like energy is coming. Like I feel like it's just coming magnetically to me and I'm like, Mm. I'm at peace. That's going to happen. Like I just can trust it. Like it's coming. It might not be here right now, but it's like, it's on its way. And so I say that until I feel it and I believe it. And I have to really like sometimes stop myself and say, don't move on. Cause sometimes I'm like, I might anticipate something's coming in the day. Like, oh shit, I've got that deadline to meet. So I'm like trying to hurry through this process. And I'm like, calm the farm. Mm -hmm. Like you can spend four minutes doing this, Kim. Like, so feel it, Um, feel it and believe it. Because I know that when I do these things, magical things happen for me and the people around me. So yeah, I feel that abundance and that kind of attraction of the stuff coming to me. And then I set an intent for the day. And my intent is one thing only because I have tried a couple of things in the past by a couple, I might mean like be present and um, eat healthy. I don't know. And when I do that, it's too many things for me to carry in my mind. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. <laughs> it never happens. Mm-hmm. So if I have one word that I'm focusing on for the day, that holds me accountable to be the best version of myself to achieve that throughout the day. And when I feel, because I have a level of awareness, I can feel when I've slipped from it. And then I can just be the one, say the one word again to myself and it refocuses myself to that. And I've mm-hmm. kind of, I might have shared this like a sometime on one of these episodes, but there's only a couple of words that I do say because I know that those words make me show up uh, in a certain way from many situations. So I'm adaptable. Like if I say, um, I don't normally say eat healthy. I say eat to fuel yourself today, for example. That's not one word. I don't normally say this. But the reason I don't say this anymore is why I'm saying it. Because eat healthy fuel or nourish yourself through the food is only one aspect of my life being impacted really like Mm -hmm. it it does have a knock-on effect like if I eat healthy then my mind's healthy I'm in a better mood then my like I'm a better person colleague to be around like so it's a little bit good but there's other words that are more impactful than that so I tend to pick words that have Um, allow me to be adaptable in more situations so for example a big one for me would be uh, just be present so if I'm present I'm really listening to your question um, or and then I was listening only to Hannah I'm listening to your response I and if for example so you've asked Hannah asked you a question I'm listening to your response I'm not listening of oh if I was asked this question what would I say I'm there present to you And then if Hannah said, okay, Kim, what do you think? Then I'd go, hmm, yeah, what do I think? Because I'm trying to be present to all moments. Mm -hmm. That presence allows me to make decisions around food. Like, are you hungry right now or are you thirsty? Oh, I'm actually only, I just need a glass of water. I don't need like the fifth burger of the day. Um, (laughs) Or like another thing about being present is like, that allows me to be productive. Because I'm like, be present to the task you're doing right now. That mm-hmm. thing that just popped into your mind, that is, you know, it's in your calendar for 2 p.m. today and you'll deal with it now, then. But now you're present mm-hmm. to this thing. So I picked the one word that I probably, and I tried to pick a word for a week or until like it feels like embedded as a habit, as a natural state mm-hmm. of being. And yeah, and rather than chopping and changing. And then when I've done that, I haven't been doing this as much, but I, I don't know, because I'm like 
after that, I'm like ready to go. I'm like, let's fucking conquer the world. Um, but what I did do after that in the past was I would listen to something that would stimulate me and inspire me and make me think different. So it might be, and it would be for like 20 minutes max. So basically that hour is all purely focused on me and setting me to be the best version of myself for whatever happens in the day. Mm. That's my process. And it's like, makes me feel magical. It makes me feel like so content in life. Um, and if you're consistent with it every day, the momentum starts to flow and the magnifying, mag I don't know what that word is, like it amplifies the results those actions amplify the results in ways that you initially don't think are possible. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Definitely going to try and adopt some of those in my morning routine, which is currently just getting out of bed and starting work. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it works for me. Like you got to find your things, but it's identifying the things that are the foundational things for setting you up to be the person that you want to be or the, to mm. live the day the way that you want to be. They're the things that I've identified with for me, but they're also things that like 50 billion books are telling you on podcasts and all that. So there must be something in that. The difference is, yeah. and this is not necessarily for you, Vic, but the people watching at home is we've heard it. What are you going to do about it? Make it work. Yeah. What's up, awesome human? Thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of myself and the Bell Vista Studios team for continuously choosing to learn with us. We really appreciate it. If the tips and the insights and the context resonate with you and you want to take your skills to the next level or you want to make your life way easier, you will love our Creator Hub. The Creator Hub is a place for people like you and us, basically, it's the stuff that we use internally at Bell Vista Studios and then we just share it publicly with you. The Creator Hub is created by instructional designers for instructional designers. And what you'll love there at the moment is we've got a quiz, Could I Be a Better Instructional Designer? That has so much tips in the feedback if you're interested in human-centered design or just taking your skills to the next level in terms of the solutions you're creating, the problems you want to solve. But in there as well, Aren't we cute? That's us. Um, but we've got the coaching courses, freebies, give us gratitude. And also we've got some templates. And basically they're always around the lens of learning experience design, instructional design and e-learning. So a human centered design focus is very much what we're about at Bell Vista Studio. So putting your learners at the heart of a solution and creating something for their needs. So there's the human centered design stuff. And then we've also got the business stuff. So this is the stuff they don't teach you about when you want to become a freelancer or a consultant in the instructional design world. So go check it out. The link is in the description. You can check out everything that is available for you. Thank you for choosing to learn with us. Continuously invest in your skills. You will be rewarded as an instructional designer share this stuff share it with other people because when we are better instructional designers we create better solutions that create better humans that create a better world so we have a very important role and i'm excited to be on this journey with you have an awesome day